What's up everyone and welcome. In this episode, we're going to talk about which cyber attacks of 2021 had the most impact on organizations worldwide in terms of financial losses and disruption of their operations. Think of this episode as a worst of 2021 recap to remind us just how devastating a cyber attack can really be. Oh, drat these computers. They're so naughty and so complex. I could pinch them. We start off with CNA Financial back in March of 2021. CNA Financial, one of the largest insurance companies in the United States, reportedly paid a $40 million ransom to restore access to its files following a ransomware attack that took place in March. According to Bloomberg, CNA Financial opted to pay the ransom two weeks after the security breach because it was not able to otherwise restore its operations. According to the two people familiar with the CNA attack, the company initially ignored the hackers' demands while pursuing options to recover their files without engaging with the criminals. But within a week, the company decided to start negotiations with the attackers, who were demanding $60 million. Payment was made a week later, according to those people. The CNA hackers used malware called Phoenix Locker, a variant of ransomware dubbed Hades. Hades was created by a Russian cybercrime syndicate known as Evil Corp, according to uh, cybersecurity experts. Evil Corp was sanctioned by the U.S. in 2019. However, attributing attacks can be difficult because hacking groups can share code or sell malware to one another. Moving on to Microsoft Exchange Server that suffered massive attacks from January to March of 2021. Tens of thousands of Microsoft customers may have been hacked, allegedly by China-linked app groups between January and March 2021, including businesses and government agencies. At least one China-linked app group uh, tracked as Hafnium chained these vulnerabilities to access on-premises exchange servers to access email accounts and install backdoors to maintain access to victim environments. The attacks started in January, but the attacker's activity intensified as weeks passed, according to the experts at security firm Velexity. Now, Velexity experts were investigating the compromise of Microsoft Exchange servers belonging to its customers when they discovered that the attackers exploited a zero-day server-side request forgery vulnerability in Microsoft Exchange, which was given the CVE 2021-26855. The IT giant released emergency out-of-band security updates that addressed four zero-day issues in all supported Microsoft Exchange versions that were actively exploited in the wild. Moving on to Colonial Pipeline. Did you forget about them? I certainly didn't. Back in May 2021, the Colonial Pipeline facility in Pelham, Alabama was hit by a cybersecurity attack in May, and its operators were forced to shut down its systems. The pipeline allows carrying 2.5 million barrels of refined gasoline and jet fuel each day up the East Coast from Texas to New York. It covers 45% of the East Coast's fuel supplies. The U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation confirmed that the Colonial Pipeline was shut down due to a cyber attack carried out by the Dark Side Ransomware Gang. Multiple media outlets, citing people familiar with the matter, reported that the company had initially refused to pay the ransom. However, the quick restoration of the operations is suspicious and suggests that the operators of the Colonial Pipeline had paid the ransom. The New York Times reported that Colonial Pipeline paid the hackers almost $5 million worth of cryptocurrency to receive a decryptor key that allowed it to restore the encrypted files. Because the tool was too slow, the company used its backups to restore the systems anyway. Moving on to JBS USA in May 2021. On May 30th, the American food processing giant JBS Foods, the world's largest processor of fresh beef, was forced to shut down production at multiple sites worldwide following a cyber attack. The cyber attack impacted multiple production plants of the company worldwide, including facilities located in the United States, Australia, and Canada. JBS USA disclosed the cyber attack according to a press release published by the company. The attack had a severe impact on infrastructure located in Australia and North America. Early in July, the U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation announced that the R Evil ransomware gang, also known as Soten Kibi, was behind the attack, and a week later, JBS admitted the payment of an $11 million ransom to the cybercriminal group after it initially demanded $22.5 million. 
Kaseya, June 2021. In June, our evil ransomware gang hit the Kaseya cloud-based MSP platform software provider Kaseya and announced that fewer than 60 of its customers and less than 1,500 businesses had been impacted by the recently uh, recent supply chain ransomware attack. The our evil ransomware operators initially compromised the Kaseya VSA's infrastructure, then pushed out malicious updates for VSA on-premise servers to deploy ransomware on enterprise networks. The ransomware gang exploited a zero-day vulnerability in Kaseya VSA servers, tracked as CVE 2021-30116, that was discovered by the Dutch Institute for Vulnerability Disclosure and reported to the company. Kaseya was apparently validating the patch before they rolled it out to customers, but our evil ransomware operators beat them to the punch and exploited the flaw in the massive supply chain ransomware attack. Our evil ransomware initially asked for $70 million worth of Bitcoin for decrypting all systems impacted in the Kaseya supply chain ransomware attack. At the end of July, Kaseya provided a universal decryptor to its customers. Experts speculate the company paid the gang to obtain it. The last one I want to talk today about is Log4j. I mean, I don't want to get you, like, too depressed or make you down a whole bottle of rum, but Log4j, December 2021, since the public disclosure of an exploit f for the Log4 shell vulnerability with CVE 2021-44228, in the Apache Log4j library, threat actors started exploiting it along with other Log4j flaws, namely CVE 2021-45046 and CVE 2021-4104, as well as CVE 2021-42550 in Attacks in the Wild. Now, this all happened within 24 hours of a publicly, ava of ma of a publicly available proof of concept. The vulnerabilities can allow threat actors to execute arbitrary code on the target systems, trigger denial of service condition, or disclose confidential information. So, what can we learn? Well, 2021 was a crazy year in terms of financial damage related to cyber attacks. The estimates are that roughly $6 trillion was lost due to cyber crime. Compare that to $3 trillion in the year 2015, and you have a really scary jump. It is imperative that we invest more in our cybersecurity teams, processes, and plans. I urge you to take the first few weeks of 2022 and take a long, hard look at your cybersecurity processes. Look at your budget, your team, your backup plan, your system maintenance plan, your plans for growth, and just make sure that everything is aligned and that your team has the resources necessary to provide a safe and secure environment for your company to thrive with little to no danger of becoming one of the companies we just recapped in this episode. I think it's also time that we focus more on quality than quantity. If you remember, there was a time when products were not brought to market until they were thoroughly tested. And I do mean thoroughly tested. Product launch was years, not months or weeks. Today, things are just pushed out as fast as the speed of the internet. Too often, our dev teams are pushed to get things out into the world as fast as possible, regardless of quality. Now, let me know in the comments below if you have heard this from your boss or a client. Well, Google, or insert your favorite billion or now trillion dollar company, has feature XYZ, so it's already been done, it can't be that hard. As if these features are boxes of cereal or something on a shelf that you just pick down and enjoy. Management used to listen more to the team instead of being driven by forces that too often don't make sense. If we do not find a sound way to ensure our products are well tested and as secure as possible, 2022 will be a really, really rough year. With that, I say thanks again for watching. Don't forget to share. And subscribe if you haven't already, and smash the bell if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the next episode. Take care. Don't forget to ride. Farewell.